Hi guys, it's Katie from Team Lucky Little Learners and this week's topic is 10 ways to make your morning messages a little bit more creative and engaging. Our first tip is to use Google Slides. Take a look at what this teacher did. She has a pictorial process showing them what they need to get done. Another way to do that is to simply list things in order. Also, when it comes time to meet with the class, you can project a greeting and a question each day. This gets discussion going each morning and starts your day off positive. I'm going to show you how I create my daily slide. I like to put the date up and a little greeting, maybe an announcement about what's to happen during the day. I also list the steps of what they should get done while they arrive in the classroom. This keeps my classroom productive and peaceful, not chaotic. I also put up pictures of the tools and the resources they'll be using. Idea number two is to use a question each day. Like I said before, this can get the discussion going in your classroom. This tip comes from a veteran teacher named Sherry, and she shared with us that she does a problem of the day every day. This is always math themed, so she said she starts it from the first day of school and incorporates skills that they're learning and tries to make it relatable for the students, like a real life situation. Monday is money. Tuesday is time. She calls Wednesday whatever day is just a current topic skill. Thursday is thinker when she'll pose a more challenging problem. And Friday is a fractions. Here are some other examples for a weekly theme. We do have these all prepared for you for the entire school year. Idea number three is to vote and graph the results. This is highly engaging and gets your students participating in your morning meeting. I use ChatGPT to form questions for the entire week every Friday after school. This day we talked about our favorite desserts. An additional tip is to have your students write on their sticky notes why they chose what they did for a class discussion prompt. You can also extend the learning by making bar graphs or pictographs. Idea number four is to use a poem each day or each week and reread the poem for fluency. If you use a decodable poem, it is great phonics practice as well. I like to project a poem like the one shown and look for our weekly sound of the week, highlighting or circling it right up on the smartboard. Try starting your days with a joke or riddle. I like to write the joke on the board and I do not write the punchline. I have students write down or discuss what they think the answer is. And then when we meet, I share the answer. We share some laughs and discuss. Idea number six is to do a fill in the blank morning message. This could be working on a phonics skill, just testing their comprehension or just for fun. We were learning about Walt Disney and his theme parks in my class. We're reading some books about him and we were also working on our controlled vowels. So I incorporated both of those skills into our morning message. The kids had a great time coming up and filling in the blanks. Idea number seven is to use Venn diagrams for students to interact and have a class discussion. It's a great idea to use these when you're also tackling those as your comprehension skill. You can either have students answer right on the whiteboard, write in their journals, or do both. Another option is to use a Venn diagram pocket chart. Idea number eight is to have a check-in. Ask your students how they're feeling and how they've been doing. This can be done just orally, or you can even put a prompt up on the whiteboard and have students anonymously check in. I have these feelings cards on a little organizer that students are familiar with. They use them while journaling. Have them write their name on the back and tape it up. And that way, if I need to have a check-in with a student, if I'm concerned, it makes it easy. Have them write their name on the back and tape it up. Idea number nine surely gets kids interacting. It's to create a collaborative picture so I put a prompt on the board. This would be an example of what I would do. I'm diving in the sea and I see a blank looking at me and students would draw a picture of something they might see in the deep sea. A way to extend this would be have students write about it in your writing block. Idea number 10 is to use morning meeting discussions as journal prompts. There's a few ways to do this. You can just project the prompt, discuss, and then have kids go write about what they talked about. You can project it and have the students write about it in their notebook then bring their notebooks up to morning meeting to share, or you can have students glue the prompt right into a notebook and write about it. I hope you found these ideas helpful. If you liked any of the resources you saw in the video, you can get those resources and more with a $1 trial. And because you're a VIP viewer, we are offering a $1 week-long access to our digital and printable library, searchable by grade level, category, resource type, or even common core. Your VIP link is in the description. Check out these two videos and be sure to hit subscribe to never miss any teaching tips and tricks.